it looks like everybody's here that's going to come. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have, um, do we have a translator or do we have translating? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if anybody like needs a trans translation devices, they are on the back table. Um, okay. In Spanish. Yeah. Huh? Would you like to say that in Spanish? <laughs> Sí, si necesitan ayuda en español, tenemos una persona que le puede ayudar a, este, en, en el izquierdo mío. Gracias. All right, can um, we get a motion? motion I'm, I'm, approved again. Actually, let's do the roll call first. Sorry, mm -hmm. jumping ahead. Roll call. Mr. Legrand is excused. Reverend Matias here. Pastor Moody. Present. Dr. Randalls. Present. Mr. Ross. Present. Ms. Slade? Present. Dr. Felb? Present. Dr. Flores? Present. President Baker? Here. Okay. Now, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So motion moved. to approve it. Support. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposition? All right. Good evening, Dr. Baker and members. We have, uh, I should introduce Carol okay. Evans, who is filling in for uh, Teresa Neal tonight, who is, I think, um, strategizing with President Obama yes. or something like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Baker and members of the board, I'd like to ask uh, Maggie Malone to come forward. She is going to share with us some of the highlights and the results of a statewide vocal orchestra and band competition. I believe uh, she has some of the auditioners here as well, and she's prepared to share with us some of the results. So I think it'll be pretty exciting. Excellent, thank you, thank Mrs. You. Evans. And uh, thank you, Dr. Baker and members of the board. I am very honored to be here today to recognize some of our amazing Grand Rapids public school students who will be performing this Saturday, January 23rd, as part of the Michigan Music Conference here in Grand Rapids at DeVos Hall. Um, there are various performance times, uh, but I will announce that when I announce the students. So this is a part of the Michigan uh, School Band and Orchestra Association, as well as the Michigan School Vocal Music Association. So to receive this honor, students had to audition and they competed against other students in the state, and then they were selected to perform in this state organization um, as part of an ensemble this Saturday. So with no further ado, the reason why we're all here, um, for all state middle school orchestra, we have Carl Fobb, who plays the cello, and Carl, or, or excuse me, Peter Fobb, who is a cellist, seventh grader at City Middle, and Peter, will you stand up, please? And All-State High School Orchestra, Carl Fobb, a violinist, 10th grader at City High School. And they will be performing this Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning in DeVos Hall. And then for All-State High School Band, we have Ian Blackman Staves, who is a trumpeter and a 10th grader also at City High. And if you would like to hear Ian perform, he will be performing at 11 o'clock. And Last but not least, we have our state honors choir participant and honoree, Catherine Zeiterveen, who sings alto, and she is a 12th grader at City High, and their performance will be at 3 o'clock. So again, congratulations to Peter Fobb, Carl Fobb, Ian Blackman-Staves, and Catherine Zeiterveen. Stand and shake. Yeah, the kids all over the state. Yeah, it's great that both of them are good at it. 
nice job in the PSATs, Terry. Congratulations. I'm going to see you. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, Ms. Malone, is there any uh, any relations to any board members that were in that group? So. Funny you should I mention that, Dr. Rigger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Two of the wonderful gentlemen, of course, are children of Dr. Fab. I thought they looked really <laughs> so anyway. so, And Montessori grads, too. So. All right, great. Thank you very much. Um, Abby, would you like to present something yes. for the board? Okay, so um, okay, so um, I'm just going to update you all on the, I emailed all the board members this, but on January 27th, it'll be next week Wednesday, um, <laughs> a, two organizations that I am also a part of but are also really prevalent in Grand Rapids, um, the Young Women for Change group run by the Michigan Women's Foundation, as well as Young Leaders Against Violence, who is run by the Kent County organization. Um, we're holding a sex trafficking awareness event like I said, on January 27th, doors will open at 5.30 p.m. and the movie, it is a screening of the movie Rape for Profit with a panel discussion following. And we, I believe we have David Becker, who is the um, chief prosecuting attorney for the Grand Rapids um, the Police Department, as well as another lieutenant from the police department speaking on the panel, as well as um, a woman from, a woman from uh, war who was actually sex trafficked in Detroit and so it'll be a huge event. We've got a lot of really important people coming, and I'd just be really appreciate it if anybody who would like to come would come. It's a free event. There's discounts on foods, such as popcorns and soda. Um, it'll probably last roughly about two and a half hours, and it's just really informational. So I'd just like everybody to come to that if they could. And did you say where it was at? Celebration North Cinema. Celebration Great. Cinema North, sorry. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, public comment for board agenda items only. I have not gotten any. <coughs> if there's any common cards, if we can pass them forward. Were you hoping to speak for a board agenda item or no, at the end of the meeting? Okay. Okay. Go ahead and bring it forward. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Um, secretary's report. All right. Um, a couple of items, uh, Grand Rapids Business Journal, Newsmakers of the Year event. Our superintendent, um, Neil, has been nominated in the category of education as a nominee for the 1520 Grand Rapids Business Journal Newsmaker of the Year event, taking place Wednesday, 20, uh, the 27th, at Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park from 7.30 a.m. Uh, to 9.30 a.m. Board members, please contact Ms. Anderson in the superintendent's office by January 20th if you'd like to attend. Also, uh, it's that time of the year for to think about the Cesar E. Chavez social justice activities. It's going to be held Thursday, March 17th, uh, down at Cesar uh, Chavez Boulevard in Granville Avenue. Uh, the march uh, is scheduled this year on March 17th, uh, 2016, down. Uh, I'm sorry, Cesar E. Chavez Boulevard. This is open to the public and will be will begin at 11 o'clock. Uh, the staging location will be <coughs> at Potter's House School, the corner of Granville and Clyde Park. So mark your calendars. That's it. All right. Seven. So we'd like to have John Helmholt come forward. He's going to share with us regarding the School Choice Expo. We do have our upcoming uh, GRPS uh, School Choice Expo, very similar to what we have done um, in years past. Um, and I apologize, I don't have that flyer right in front of me here, and I will pull it up shortly. Um, Uh, so yeah, the next School Choice Expo is next Thursday, uh, January 28th. It's from 4 to 6.30 p.m. This is at Gerald R. Ford Academic Center. This is where all of our theme schools and centers of innovation will be there on display. Um, as you will recall, we have, uh, with our theme schools and our center, centers of innovation, they do have an application process. And there's an application deadline uh, that is February 26th. So this is just one more opportunity for the families to come get additional information 
about these great school choices, uh, then they can also go online at apply.grps.org. On there is not only the application uh, in English and Spanish and be, can be done electronically, so it's a point and click. It takes just a few minutes to fill out, uh, but then there's also any of the criteria for selections is also done right there so they can download for Zoo, Blandford, Economicology, and City High Middle School. All right. All right. Sorry. Next so next Thursday. That's always a fun event, even if you've already decided where your kids will go. It helps us to know what's uh, happening in the city and the choices that are available. Okay, action items. Um, our first action item is uh, on superintendent's contract. Can I get a motion to support? So moved. Support. support. <clears throat> Any discussion? Uh, Dr. Flores. Um, I, I still continue to be um, <coughs> concerned about the numbers and how they add up and what's reported and yet what's in the contract uh, is the <coughs> the explanation that was given, given me was that the 36000 that we are going to return, uh, we're going to return to the district coffers uh, and yet that then would be offset by some of the increases in pay <coughs> that we would be given to the superintendent. Right. Okay, and those would, would add up and there are no additional costs to the district? Um, actually, Sharon, could you come forward? Just I'll give my impression and then if others have the same impression, um, then Sharon can also do it. So, we, um, and this is also for the public to know. So the superintendent um, is requesting a three-year extension to our contract, which would go through 2019. Correct. Right. Okay. And then um, she is requesting no raise except whatever becomes raises that are given to the other um, union groups. So only if if, a, if, a, if the other union groups get a raise, her and the other administrators would get the same raise. So she's requesting no raise. What she is requesting is that there was a technicality with the way our pinch, the, the uh, state pension calculates um, the eligibility based on salary and that the eligibility based on salary um, by the first year when she came in, she was in the interim capacity and so her salary was lower than it would have been and currently is and she is not allowed to um, to receive a pension based on her actual current salary. We have been paying into that pension though as if she was allowed that and so and so we have overpaid for her pension $36,000. That $36,000 is being sent back to the district because they cannot distribute that to her through the pension. Um, and she also is not allowed to receive the pension benefits that we were expected to pay her. So all she has asked for is essentially for us to offset that loss. So the numbers in the new contract reflect <coughs> Um, Thirty-six thousand dollars that we'll receive back, and we will give to her in the f in, a, in a couple different payments that are noted in the contract, and she'll have an increased annuity to cover the amount that we would have paid for her pension. So essentially, there is no change in her contract in terms of what she's expecting to receive because she's expecting to receive the same amount um, as all. we're just giving it to her in an annuity rather than paying it to the state to give to her in a pension. Does that accurately reflect yes. that? Yes, yeah. okay. very good. <laughs> I was like, very that's my good. understanding. Uh, okay. Excellent. Uh, so does that help, uh, Dr. Flores? Well, yes. And then um, secondly, that this is a three-year contract? Correct. Yes. Because it does say extension of two years and so but but this it speaks to the first amendment of a contract and the amendment of the contract is for this next three years it's an amendment to the her original contract okay um, was there any consideration of uh, of of any options of one year contract or two year contract or is those is just uh, just the three year that is before us Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think personally, I was like <laughs> relieved to find out that she was committing to three more years. So 
I agree. Uh, you know, I, I that agree. it was brought up at the last board meeting. We all had a discussion about it, and and we said, great, three years is wonderful. We discussed the fact that her uh, her salary is a very median uh, salary for the area. Um, and so that was the time to have a consideration whether she was going to have a, a less of a time. Uh, and it just didn't come up as a, as a concern or an issue, having her extend it further to five years or shorten it to one or two years. Well, I, yes, uh, Ms. Lee. I would agree. I think that we're very fortunate if we can keep her, keep her for three years. And so I was very supportive of, of our change, our addition. Dr. Flores. Yeah, I, I raised the issue because I, you know, I know we had a discussion, <coughs> but never did uh, did I uh, gain from that discussion that that we had an option to discuss to discuss other um, uh, potential agreements. I w it was presented in, uh, as it was. You know, uh, my overriding concern is that our district uh, continues to be underachieving. That um, African American and Hispanic children, for instance, four fifths of them. Look at the M-step results. Um, more and more, it looks like a, a losing team with respect to achievement. Um, and I, I, I really think that we owe the public uh, a greater measure of success for academic achievement of the population that we're entrusted to serve. And uh, it is the leadership that brings about change in, in, in uh, reducing the achievement gap between groups. I think that when we only have one of our 25 elementary schools that that perform at 53% or uh, uh, a, a proficient standard, that there's uh, definitely a lot of concern to be expressed. Um, and I would hope that we'd be a little bit more um, aggressive in our uh, demanding of, of a higher level of achievement. in leadership a year from now or two years from now being the um, um, providing any short-term success I think we've laid a good long-term vision in place and I'm personally very comfortable with the, the captain that's currently steering the ship and it's just um, I think we all would like to see results quicker but that's really just not the nature of this work as I'm sure you're aware I just <clears throat> oh, it's I me. go ahead I concur with uh, Mr. Ross and uh, Dr. Flores. There are a lot of things that you and I have talked about in terms of what needs to be done and where we're at. But I think as a team, we can all do that together as we sit and discuss what needs to be done in our district. And I think at this point in time, with the transformation plan, we have turned a lot of things around. But I think we're at a point right now where those are the very issues that we are getting at. And um, I believe that with the superintendent's uh, position and giving her the next three years we can make those changes and make them even greater uh, and it's going to take us as a team to make that happen so as a group and I'm like Mr. Ross I'm speaking for myself but as a team uh, I think the opportunities is in our hands as board members to make the, sure that we assist her in making sure that those things happen uh, Dr. Just a couple of things. Procedurally, um, we had the contract presented to us in the work session, and I think that probably would have been the opportunity to discuss whether there was um, will amongst the board for a different term on the contract. So the opportunity was presented. I have to, um, first of all, take issue with the M step as a first year uh, indicator of where our children are at. <clears throat> since it's a new assessment and based on uh, standards-based education. So I think it's going to take a little while for us to get a clear indication of where the children are at with their education. We can't just take the M step. I um, felt tremendous relief when I, Teresa requested a three, or when uh, Superintendent Neal trusted, <coughs> requested a three-year contract for the reasons of stability, but also because of her leadership. I've seen her since she took the office not stand still for a moment. 
if there was a sense of complacency or not willing to make changes on any level. Um, the, certainly the needs that exist in our district, I would be concerned with leadership that didn't do that, but I have seen her consistently look at the district in multiple ways, at multiple levels, with, with consultants, with experts, with people within, continually re-examining what needs to be done, what needs to address. And um, I am deeply appreciative of her will, her leadership, her skill, her acumen, and I am thrilled right now to vote on a three-year contract for her. President Baker, I'd like to make a motion that we um, approve the president's, I mean, superintendent's contract as submitted. Support. Okay, so you call the roll. <clears throat> I'd support that. Okay, let's call the roll. All right. Mr. Legrand is excused. Reverend Matias, yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Ms. Slade? Yes. Dr. Felb? Yes. Mr. F uh, Dr. Flores, I'm sorry. No. President Baker? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, the superintendent will be with us three more years. Um, bond authorizing resolution. Can I get a motion? Move for approval. Support. Any discussion? All right, let's call the roll. Okay, Mr. Legrand is excused. Reverend Matias, yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Ms. Slade? Yes. Dr. Felb? Yes. Dr. Flores? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Okay. All right, um, purchasing agenda. Move for approval. Support. Support. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay, Mr. Legrand is excused. Reverend Matias, yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Ms. Slade? Yes. Dr. Felb? Yes. Dr. Flores? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Okay. All right. And finally, the consent agenda grouping. Move for approval. Support. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Mr. Legrand is excused. Reverend Matias? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Ms. Slade? Yes. Dr. Felb? Yes. Dr. Flores? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Okay. All right, a couple quick discussion items. Um, we need to, or we've, uh, the board has been asked to consider a closed session um, for February 15th. This is basically so we can get the information we need to move forward with negotiations and and we're hoping to have financial information about where we're at as a district. So um, I would like to ask the board whether or not it would be better to have this meeting before or after our regularly scheduled meeting. So we could meet, we don't have to meet at 4.30, um, but we could meet at 5 or 5.30, or would you guys prefer to come at 6.30 and to, um, and then go into closed session after our, our regular meeting? Is that February 15th? Yeah, February 15th. Mm -hmm. Before. Yeah, I think before is to go before. Is there any is there any real concerns either way? We'll try to nope. February 15th? Yeah, that's, yeah, it's that a, Monday. That's a Monday. Is that a Monday? Yes, that would regular be regular board, board meeting. So a regular board meeting on February 15th and then we would um close session. 4:30 is fine with me. But we don't we don't need 5.30? Two hours, do we? So, 5.30? 5.30. 5.30 would work fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll plan on 5.30 on February 15th for closed session so we can move forward with negotiations. Um, the, uh, you should have received, I didn't receive much request for um, committee appointments, um, so with that, uh, basically, we're just keeping things as they were. 
Um, and so yes, there's no reason to change. And I think that uh, we were working together. Um, the meeting schedule <laughs> will also be posted for now as it was currently scheduled. But if there's, but it would be up to um, at the February meeting of your me uh, committee to discuss if you'd like any changes. So um, with that, um, any concerns about that? I'm hoping everybody's happy with their uh, placement. Um, the NSBA Boston Conference. Um, this would be the one that um, Nate, John, and I went to last year that was in Nashville. This one is in Boston. Um, is there any interest amongst the board to consider going? And if so, we'll need to start working it out with Julie. So Mo is interested I would be go. very interested. To go <laughs> Abby would love oh, to go. But <laughs> I think you got school on those days. So anyway. mm -hmm. it's Dr. Dr. Baker, put me, really good Actually, put me down, Dr. Baker. Huh? Put me down. Okay, so Mo and... And um, Reverend Moody are I might be considered. Okay. So um, we'll have Julie contact and begin working out registration. Okay. okay. All right. Um, public comment, non agenda items. So if you'd like to come forward and introduce yourself. Do you have um, ever done this? Are we Joe Thompson? Hi, my name is Mary Jo Thompson. I'm a foster adoptive mom in Grand Rapids. I've had 180 kids. Go ahead and have a seat, seat so that way, because we want the mic. Just there, totally pick up. Up. Give the instructions. Go ahead, instructions. Okay. Yep. You'll, you'll have three minutes and you can begin. Honey, I'm Polish. I can talk quick. Um, I have a son that's at Coit, um, does not belong at Coit. We have gone through many, many teachers, Paulette. We have talked to Laura. We talked to Mr. McGee, the principal. This child is super assaultive. He needs to be in a better environment than what he is in. He's in a MOSI program, and yet he's severe cognitively impaired. He needs to be at Lincoln, not at the school. We fought since this child came into care. John Hemholt and I have talked to give him a nurse even at school. He needed to be at Lincoln. He has very many, many needs. His medical, he has never been to school but for four months at Lincoln four years ago, and then he did the basics at Lincoln. They thought he should move on. Since then, he's had many, many medical problems that have totally destroyed that part of his brain. He retains nothing. He has retained nothing in the five months he's been at Coit. He desperately needs to be someone else. He's assaulted, like I said, the teachers, the aides, the students. And I have finally said to Dr. McGee, if he hits another child, I will give their parents all the documentation I have so they can sue. I don't know what we need to do. We need to get this child out of this class. He does not belong there. <coughs> and I shouldn't have to be fighting for everything this child needs. I mean, I'm fighting for what he has and what he's gained in our house, but yet we're losing it at school. And I just need someone to say, this isn't right. We've dumped through all the hoops. We've had meeting after meeting, and it's always take another meeting. <coughs> I don't need another meeting. I need this child where he can, and I have kids at Lincoln. I've had kids all over. I have two most like kids at my house with him. Nowhere. He's not able to even retain alphabet, letters, shapes. He doesn't need to be here and we're wasting time. This violation of his rights on so many, it's violation of the other kids' rights. I told the teachers to call their union because it can't be legal that he's been there being beat on every day. And then when I say he slaps and he outweighs the kids in his class by two. He's a big boy. I don't know what else to do. I have jumped through all the hoops that they've asked me to. We've had doctors give them statements. I don't know what else to do. This child needs help beyond what I can give him as a mom. He needs a school environment to stand behind him. And I've had so many kids through my house. They've all, a great majority have been special ed. I know special ed backwards and forwards. I've said from the beginning this child belongs there at Lincoln. Paulette, for some reason, is adamant that he stay at Coit, even when the teachers and the other people are telling him, she doesn't belong here, he doesn't belong here. So I'm at a loss to know what to do. I mean, I don't know what to do. And it seems like I fight for this child more than I've ever fought for any other child. Any other child. That's 180 some kids, and I've had some kids that had some really big needs, and it was me standing up against a lot of people to win what these kids needed. And I don't think I should fight with my school board. This is my school. Grand Rapids Public is my school. I mean, my kids go there. 
I'm proud of the, what my kids do. I'm proud of the school system, the way it's turning around. I really am. But they're completely destroying this child. They're not giving him what he deserves, what he wants. And he's, now he's suspended for three days, which I said, okay, fine. He doesn't understand why he's suspended. We worked at God's Kitchens today, and we washed tables, and we washed. We are, I'm keeping him busy. Your time is up. Thank you very much. It's, it's not our policy to respond, but you will get response from the staff, so. Yep. No, is there any other? That was it. All right, uh, superintendent comments. And, uh, Are you sure I you don't want to add in? So <laughs> this is I'm your opportunity. No, I <laughs> no. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do board member comments, but I'm gonna just do a circle starting with uh, Mr. Rossin going around, if you're all right. No comment. Dr. Randalls? No comment. Pastor Moody? Yeah, last night uh, at the uh, Grand Rapids Community College uh, for the King Day celebration, there were a number of students that were selected from the three institutions, uh, Davenport and uh, uh, Grand Valley State University and Grand Rapids CC who received scholarships. One of our students from Central Innovation received a full ride, full academic scholarship ride for Davenport. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ought to be thankful uh, for that. That shows that there is some progress taking place in our school system. And uh, there were some students earlier at the um, um, Urban League breakfast uh, that received some financial support for Grand Valley State University from Union High School. Um, so we need to have those names uh, to come forward. Maybe our student rep can get those names and find out who those individuals are and give a report on that. <laughs> right, thank you. Uh, Dr. Flores? Well, I continue to be research-based and data-driven. And as I read and I see <clears throat> that uh, we have national statistics that, um, that show where, where students ought to be on a national level, when compared to that level, we fall short. When I continue to re read and review data up from Michigan and where we are with our, with our populations and where uh, you see the academic achievement gap being, uh, being closed in certain places uh, and then compare our, our data, you know. Uh, I, I don't want to be the naysayer, but I quest for a day when we can look at that data and say, you know what, we're on the target we're, or we're above target, we're above average and I'll continue to advocate until we have every population, every disaggregated population that we serve in the Grand Rapids Public Schools at a higher achievement rate so that we don't have to hold our heads down and say, yeah, we're making some progress or this is wonderful over here. If it was Michigan State losing, we would make some major changes to that field. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Ms. Slade. Dr. Paul? Uh, Reverend Matias. No comment. All right. Um, I have to say that I am ecstatic that Teresa Weatherall Neal will be our superintendent for the next three years. Indeed. I say that because I know what I know about her. I know what um, this has happened in this district. I know what the community says about her. On Sunday morning, I, um, Teresa and I preached in church. So I'm um, at Fountain Street Church. Um, and so the two of us really? uh, got up there and we talked about what happened. And when people were walking into the church, I was remembering knowing those people from before the superintendent was the superintendent and how people were, when I went to that church, were pleading with an opportunity to salvage the district, to salvage the Montessori school that was up the road. And, and we had to have secret meetings with some of these parents and former teachers to be able to survive. That's, that's the district that we had. When, um, what, what, where we were at four years ago, four years ago, um, was on the path to being the same school district as Detroit Public Schools is today, right. with the same set of takeover and other people. It's the Wild West in Detroit and who's running the schools. And this community, um, the community in four years has come from, can't even imagine a, a school district that has that kind of disarray. 
and that, dis that disarray is gone. That disarray is erased from people's memories. Now, with that, there is a lot of, of there is a long way to go, and I, and, and I um, am offended by the idea that there's only one of us in this room that's questing for the day when the data is, says that we're on target. That the people up here, all the people up here, all the people in this audience are questing for the day and are working their asses off every single day to do as much as they can to move this district. And they're doing it under the leadership of Teresa Weather on nil. Um, there's challenges. Um, there's responsiveness. This is what this district is about. When I can go out there and talk to those people picketing who are asking for um, uh, a better uh, financial package and they trust that we're working, that this board and this staff is working to make sure that their lives are better and that they can talk to us. I remember when people were fearful of the people that were out front, when there were hundreds of people out front advocating for changes in this district. So this is a district, we are very fortunate to have Teresa Farrell Weatherall Nil as our superintendent, and I will end with that.